look at a brand new video where I talk about the 2022 Senate prediction and basically reacting to political analysis, election predictions, and Senate predictions. So without further ado, let's cut right into the video. First of all, his margins and mine are a little bit different in basically the prediction. My margins can be found in the description. Safe, my margin safe is 15 points above. Likely is 5 to 15 points. Lean is still 5 points. And tall is under 2 percentage points. However, this map is a map I used using the political analysis margins. Safe is 15 points above for him. Likely is 7 to 15 points. Lean is 2 to 7 points. And tall is under 2 percentage points. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, so let's start the audio. Way. With primaries occurring next spring, we'll be able to have a very good sense okay, of what the city is likely to run for re-election in California. Okay, which so Richard I Shelby is retiring, but he'll be replaced 16, as you can see, Tim Scott, Michael Bennett, he's not going to be most charismatic. Okay, so these are the safe states. Uh, we can see, I think, a few states got left out. We can just skip a little bit more towards this portion, or right? So... Um, I don't like ads. Going. All right, so yeah, going here. Well, I'm not sure why Kentucky and Indiana is in the likely column, so we can go back a little bit. All right, I'm. I don't not sure how. Kentucky and Indiana ended up in the likely column. Okay. This is actually his eighth term, so um, in the no, state of Iowa, Iowa. Chuck Rask. Kentucky, I think both these states, they're going to go for the GOP. There's really no way that the Democratic Party is going to win. It's just that their, their incumbents are not exactly the most popular in I their very agree. Republican home state. Um, in the state of Indiana, you have Todd Young, who won by just 9.7% in 2016, and Kentucky with Rand Paul, who won by just 14.5%. Yes, that is true. These, ca these incumbents are not the strongest. However, with political division, I do believe those states will be in the safe column, especially Kentucky. I don't see it in the likely column right now. It's just not possible. I'm up at 47. Um, next up, I want to take a look at the state of Arizona, where Mark Kelly will be running for re-election. Uh, won Nevada is leaning in his perspective i think it's tilt i can uh, i say that lean is reasonable i'd say that tilt is also reasonable so keep that in mind i think tilt is more reasonable he might think lean is more reasonable the 2020 special election fine, in arizona beating Mark McSally, so he was able to win no, a yeah, two-year term better. until 2022 where he will now be up for re-election um in 2022 to win his first full does endorse Blake Masters that will not be good uh, for his campaign. Uh, and for the race overall, uh, we see similar numbers here to what we see, very unlike polling that we do see. Okay, so Arizona, I could go lean or tilt either way. I'd say closer to tilt, but if he thinks it's lean, I'll bear with that. Uh, moving on now to the state was a uh, nation because she it gets so Lisa Mark uh, Mikowski may actually lose. Oh. Lisa Murkowski, um, in all likely going to be um, definitely a... Okay, so, Alaska is likely, I don't agree, alright? Ranked choice voting, you all know, very likely, in all likelihood, two Republicans are going to end up in the top, so... I very well disagree with this likely characterization. Republican, that will be served. He barely defeated J team and for the Democrats. Um, the Republicans are greens. It's not the no, best. No, it's not lean. Like, clearly, this is not lean. It's not going to go down under 7% points, alright? I have it as likely as see it at 13, 14 points. It's not going to go under 15 points. Alright, 15 points. Now, it could go under 12 points, I'd say, but at most, it's going to go, it's not going to go under 10 points. Alright, putting the lean column in the under 7% points, it's just a little bit, I'd say, too radical, all right? It's not possible at this moment in time, at least. New Hampshire tilt, I agree. This is something I do agree in. A tilt characterization for New Hampshire is pretty reasonable to me. We will eventually win, um, making this the spin right now. Ted Buck of Jackson still up there. 
it is not shifting left fast enough for the Jew, for the Democratic Party. Yes, it is shifting left. Yes, it is not shifting left fast enough. And just the political environment, I do agree with the North Carolina characterization. He will likely be running against Herschel Walker, who is a former NFL star and endorsed by Donald Trump before he even announced. So he has announced by now, uh, which is why his chances went up so much last month. Um, but he will be running and he probably will win the Republican nomination. But against uh, Raphael Warnock, he is still lacking just a little bit. Raphael Warnock being the first Democrat elected to the Senate, Mark Rubio will be running for Okay, the so he put in Florida's lean. Actually, you know what? I'm going to narrow it down to Lean. All right, I think for two to seven points, Lean is very much reasonable. I'll narrow it down to Lean. Georgia told Democrat, I think that's very reasonable. Herschel Walker is not the strongest candidate. Um, he has some, um, I guess, scandals, and really, he's lagging behind in the polls a little bit. So I do believe this whole characterization is what I'll characterize it as election here um, um, than whoever he ran against in 2016, um, which is Patrick Murphy. So this puts the GOP up at 48, uh, Democrats at 49. I will be giving the GOP the state of Ohio, where Rob Portman... I'd say it's reasonable. I actually, I'll have it as late as well. I do believe, is look, it's going to be over 5%, but it's going to be... I think close to 7%. Around that 7% barrier, lean or likely, I think both of these are reasonable. I'd say actually it will be lean. I mean, we'll not be running right now with Sherrod Brown, but Tim Ryan is not Sherrod Brown. Um, Tim Ryan does lead after right now. Ron Johnson will be running. Promise um, that he would not be running again in 2022 currently is the front runner and if you do look at the head to head polling right now this is a very very tight race it's currently even and finally in the state of pennsylvania uh, tilt blue for wisconsin i don't think that's you know i don't think that's the most likely scenario right wisconsin i do believe is pretty much gone for the democrats as of this time moment in time now pennsylvania is not gone Pennsylvania is within reach for Democrats. However, Wisconsin is pretty much gone. I do not see a chance that Wisconsin ends up going to the Democratic Party. I could see a chance where the race gets under 1%, but right now, Wisconsin's just gone for the Democrats, alright? I'm not being mean, but that's just how it is. Yeah, I think this is not too hard. Um, I do think that currently this is a lean categorization for the Dems. Um, right now, Pat Toomey... Um, look, George, I think Pennsylvania is going to be very close either way. It's going to be under 1% point. This is my prediction. However, it's not going to be a lean Democrat. The Democrats are not going to win the race by over two points. I do think that lean Dem is a little bit too, I guess, I'm a... I'm a little bit too iffy about that prediction, all right? I could see a toting in the Democrat column. Really, it's a closer to a toss-up, but in the end, no. It's not going to be a to It's not going to be the lean blue. All right, tilt blue, I think that's reasonable. I won't agree, but I think that's reasonable. Um, lean blue, I think that's a little bit radical. Will not be running for re-election so another retiring republican and for the republican nomination now that will have to occur to replace uh pat toomey for the gop sean parnell has received the nomination of donald trump and that's why he spiked from 52 all the way up to 80 percent against Jar jeff bardos um so sean parnell currently i think that with trump's uh, support i think he will likely be the nominee and um on the democratic side john fetterman who is a very strong candidate and the current lieutenant governor of the state so don fetterman right now is just destroying um everyone else in the polls um yes he is destroying everyone else in the polls i'm not sure if i'm going to trust the polls though because again polls were very wrong in 2020 now i'm naturally you know i could see fetterman winning all right the polls could be accurate However, data for po progress is probably not the best poll to trust. And I'm not saying the poll is horrible, but the poll has a Democratic lean, so they 
Fireman plus 8 FMR plus 10 characterization, I don't think it's the fairest after all. And Fairman is not polling at 50% in any of these polls. So I do believe that, you know, there might be some more Republicans that are more inclined to say undecided because they don't really know that much about the candidates. I think that, you know, polling probably will overestimate Democrats as of it stands currently. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be Fireman plus 10 or Connor Lamb plus 10. However, Yes, the race pretty much right now is toss-up, but I do think Republicans have the advantage, alright? Not the hugest of all advantages, but advantage. Okay, so. You know, there are many other polls that do show him quite a bit ahead. Um, so I will categorize this as lean for the Democratic Party, putting them up at 51 to the GOP at 49 as of right now. Um, so this is my updated prediction for the 2022 Senate elections. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Make sure you'd like it down below. If you enjoyed it, comment down below which party you think will win in 2022 and why. Subscribe to our channel if you have not. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Alright, so I'm going to close it. Yeah, I think, again, he is, he is pretty liberal. At least in my opinion, he is liberal. So, yeah, just a brief re recap, I th I'd say that most of these predictions I'd say is is pretty reasonable. Nevada, Arizona, and the lean blue column, I think that's reasonable as to me. Um, Alaska in the likely column, it is also reasonable. I could see a scenario where, where a Democrat doesn't make it up to the, I guess, runoff, or after... 2D ranked choice voting, so yeah. Going to the stage, South Carolina should be safe, not not likely, alright. South Carolina safe. Missouri, I don't think it's going to go down to lane. Kentucky, I don't see it going down to likely. Indiana, I could see it go down to likely. The race is not really talked about by the media or anything, so I do believe it will be safe. Going to Wisconsin, I don't think it will be tilt for the Democrats. Pennsylvania, I don't think it will be lean for the Democrats. I think that he could characterize Wisconsin as tilt R and Pennsylvania as tilt D. I have no problem with that. However, I think the, the prediction is a little bit off in these states. I think Colorado is pretty much on par because everyone predicts that Colorado will be likely Democrat to real American predictions. It, no, it's not going to go to the Republicans. No, that's not going to happen. Um, New Hampshire, New Hampshire, I'd say Tilt R is very much my prediction, and I'd say that's very, very reasonable. So, yes, this is my prediction. Um, his prediction, I think, is generally having a dumb heart bias. I'd say it's okay. I don't say, I won't say it's the best, but I don't say it will be the worst. So, yeah. And by the way, his final 2020 election night was extremely accurate so I'm pretty sure I will trust him a little bit more so yeah thanks for watching have a nice day bye